we are coming to you from Banff, Canada. And it was a long drive to get up here from St. Louis. Six day drive. <laughs> but we're in beautiful downtown Banff. And uh, to get here, we had to go across the border. And I can tell you, Linda did the research, but we were both really anxious. Yes. On what it was going to be like to present ourselves to the officials there at the border and uh, what that was going to be like. So we made it, obviously, <laughs> but we want to share our experience with you and maybe help you prepare for what you might expect. So stay tuned. Yeah, so um, Gary had wanted to run in three different races. That, that's how we were going to plan our vacation. Uh, the first one was um, at the beginning of June, end of May, beginning of June in the Grand Tetons. And then we were going to move to Yellowstone where he was going to run a 5K and then go up to Glacier for another half marathon. The only problem was between Yellowstone and Glacier, there was this huge amount of time. So I started looking at the map and I said, hey, why don't we spend a week of that time and go to Banff? I hear that it's so beautiful, we need to go. Of course, Gary was on board. And so it was Grand Tetons, Yellowstone, Banff, and then after this, then we're going to um, Glacier. So, of course, now we have to plan for going over the border. <laughs> the dreaded border. The first time in an <laughs> RV. Yes. That's the big thing. I mean, I think if you go um, in a car, it's not a big deal. But when you have all these possessions with you in an RV, they want to know, what are you bringing? You have a refrigerator. It's you like have a pantry. You, well, you're, you're bringing your household yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're not even full time. <laughs> so. And it's intimidating, too. It is, but I think as long as you know that you are following the rules and you're not bringing in anything that you're not supposed to, there's no need to be anxious about it at all. Don't be nervous. Well, let's let's first talk about the initial preparation and what kind of goes into that as far as documents and, and right. those, those kind of things. Right. Got to have your passport. Yeah. So I made sure I updated mine. Mine was coming due, so I went ahead and take, took care of that. Um, if you're traveling with children, you need to make sure you have birth certificates, custodial papers, things like that if you don't have passports for them. Um, if you're bringing a pet, make yeah. sure that you have their vaccination records, especially uh, their ra rabies vaccinations. Ra rabies has to be done within the last three years. Because that's how long a rabies vaccination lasts anyway. Right. Um, and then also make sure that you're bringing along um, your registration and insurance, things like that, on your vehicles. You may not need them, but you're better off being prepared just right. in case. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to talk about mental preparation and what you need to do to really get yourself ready for the interview. But first and foremost, as you're waiting, understand that the wait times are going to vary depending on the time of day, the time of week. Just be patient and obviously your time will come. But the other thing too is as you're driving up to the, before you get to the booth, understand that there's lanes that are designated for autos, for RVs, for semis, and there'll be signage out there for you to follow. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure you're in the right lane because we've seen an instance in an interview on YouTube where one lady got, she thought, she was inspected because the guard wasn't too happy that she wasn't in the right lane. Right. <laughs> There's a, a designated line. When it's your turn, you'll be stopping short of the station. So as a person that's in front of you is going through their interview, you need to pause and wait behind that line until it's your turn. So make sure you're on the lookout for that. Right. Also, when, when you go through the interview, be personable. Try try not to be nervous. Just kind of be yourself. Uh, don't act like you're hiding something because, you know, a lot of these agents, um, they're all trained to the a certain protocol, but they have their own way of doing the interview. So they're going to be asking you questions, and some of them may not even ask you the same questions that another agent is going to ask. 
So, but they're looking for certain triggers that, you know, might lead them to pulling certain, maybe a thread or two. So do your homework as we talked earlier, have all of your information ready so you can answer their questions and get on, get on with your trip. Right. So make sure that no sunglasses, everybody should take their sunglasses off. Right. Lower the sunglasses. <laughs> Lower the back driver's side window because they'll want to see in the back seat also. And I, I think the other thing too as we close this particular segment is as they're asking you the questions, be succinct in your responses. Don't give them any more information than what you really have to. Just be direct, be positive, communicate firmly, confidently, and it should be an easy process. This morning we're crossing the border into Canada to go to Banff National Park. We're excited. We've read all kinds of information about what they ask and what they look for. Um, any restrictions that there are and because I do all the trip planning and Gary has really no idea where we're going half the time I did make him a little sticky with uh, where we're going to be this week and when we're coming back into the states hi Gary are you talking behind my back <laughs> so that they have an understanding that we do have ties in the states and we will be going back uh, we saw a video where, unfortunately, a young couple that works on the road and they don't have a sticks and bricks, uh, they were denied entry because they were kind of flying by the seat of their pants and they weren't sure when they were going to go back. Canada did not like that. <laughs> they said, nope, <laughs> go back home. So, unfortunately, that happened. We want to make sure that there are no questions whatsoever as to what our plans are. Okay, we pulled up at 10.14 a.m. We'll see how long it takes before we get up to the booth. Get the windows down. Okay, window down, driver's side, and the back window. No sunglasses. are you? Just a week. We'll be leaving uh, on the 20th to Banff. No, sir. No, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no. Thank, Thank you. you. That was it. Like what? three, maybe four questions. We're international RVers now. <laughs> so another thing to mention is that um, don't try making jokes with the guy, you know. Just, they are straight laced, serious. He was, when I, he asked me if we had $10,000 in cash and I said, I wish. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I'm sure it's, yes, I know, I hear that a hundred thousand times a day. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the questions that you might encounter. And again, some, some of these guards may or may not ask some of these questions. But I think first and foremost, where are you going? You, you need to know, obviously, where you're going and how long are you going to be in the country? Right. When are you going to leave? <laughs> <laughs> They, I think sometimes too they ask where home is. If you say, well, you're going back to the States, and they might just say, you know, well, where's home? They might ask, are you employed? We already talked about the declaration of money and that was ask of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, he also asked to declare weapons, ask if we had any weapons. Firearms. Firearms, and we did not. But one thing that's come up in some of the videos that, that Linda had watched. Yeah, a sub question to that. Yeah, is, Bear spray versus pepper spray. Mm -hmm. and because pepper spray is considered a weapon. It is. But as long as you're, so if you tell them, well, I have bear spray, and they may ask, well, does it 
specifically say on the canister bear spray that's okay and you're okay yeah but if it's just a pepper spray container that you're bringing in nope you're gonna leave it and then the last question they that we think that they may ask because we keep hearing people talk about what foods you can and cannot bring into the country plants animals things like that so we didn't have a pet with us we didn't have any well we had a plant but they never asked about plants um, food never asked us about never came food. up they don't really care about small amounts that you're going to be traveling with in your refrigerator if you're going to be bringing in enough to you know stock a store or something or to sell on the street corner or whatever that's an issue they don't want that exactly but as long as it was just regular you know day, daily food groceries it wasn't just, an issue. just just to support yourself Uh-oh, we forgot something. <laughs> to some people, it's going to be very important. It could be know. real important for us, and that's maybe why we forgot it. <laughs> it's not quite that important, but if you like cannabis or weed, uh, you can take your chance there. But <laughs> not, You can't bring that in. Yeah. You can buy it once you get here, but don't bring it in. And alcohol, um, I believe it's two liters per person of like hard liquor. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's about it. We wanted to say goodbye with a beautiful view here near our campsite. And we are here by the red Adirondack chairs. Those are all over Banff where you can sit and enjoy the view. So we'd like to leave you with our view this morning. Don't forget that if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little button so that you get notified for our next videos. Thanks a bunch for being with us today. Uh, we hope that you don't have any problem getting through the, <laughs> the customs on your way in or out of, Banff, of, of Canada. And uh, we'll see you on the trails. Bye-bye.